All right, welcome back to the Confessions of a Domain Hoarder, where in the first video, I explained how I have over 30 domains that I've bought that I've intended to stand up landing pages on, but haven't quite got to yet. So in the first, first part, we went over an N8N workflow that generated a config content file. That's all you need to then pass into a React app to go ahead and render out your whole landing page. And so in this video, what I'll go ahead and do is talk about the React app, how it works, the different components of it, and how you can set it up yourself to go ahead and create landing pages in no time. So let's go ahead and get into it. So to start, just a quick background on who I am. I'm Hunter Sneed, the creator of Getting Automated. Getting Automated is intended to teach small and medium-sized businesses, as well as employees or automators that are working in that space, to use the power of automation to really drive revenue, increase efficiency, and everything that is a benefit of introducing automation into a business. Additionally, I'm the creator and founder of Workflowsy, an automation consulting services business that goes ahead and actually builds out these workflows for businesses that don't want to go ahead and do it themselves. So let's get right into the content. All right, so before we get into React, I want to go ahead and go over JavaScript at a high level. So JavaScript is a programming language that's extremely popular on the web. And essentially what JavaScript allows you to do is it takes kind of your static content that would be your HTML and CSS pages and goes ahead and gives it dynamic capabilities. So it allows you to render out content. It allows you to make calls to APIs. It allows you to really kind of add any kind of functionality to your site beyond just the static text and styling that you get with HTML. JavaScript has a ton of different frameworks and extensions built on top of it, such as React that we'll be using today. But JavaScript is really the foundation for the site that we'll be building for this actual project. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into React. So essentially what React is, is React is an extension of JavaScript or really more broadly, a library for JavaScript that allows you to create what's called components that represent visual aspects of your website. And so you can use components in different ways, but one of the most common use cases for components is to actually go ahead and have reusable components like uh, a header bar would be a component footer bar would be a component, maybe a sidebar, maybe a hero section on your website. Basically different sections or different subsections of a site can all be made up of little micro components. And then you can put the components together to create your actual page or site. And so really the benefit of this is that you're able to have reusable components across all your pages. So say you had a header that you want to have consistent on all the pages. You don't have a static header on every single page of your site that you have to go and change when you want to say, add a link or change a link in your header, you change it once and it goes ahead and distributes it across all of those different pages. So components make it really, really easy and modular for you to go ahead and build out sites with JavaScript, specifically with React. And so we'll be using components pretty extensively with this configuration example of how we're building this out with N8N. And so I'll go ahead and talk about kind of what that all looks like in just a second. So getting into components, as I said, a modular design is a big part of it. So is combining components and also the layout structure. But until you actually see it, it probably doesn't make that much sense. So let me go ahead and kind of go through the different components that make up this page and talk about how they're all used together. So within this, I've got a couple different components that you can see here. So I've got one here, here, and here. And essentially what you're seeing is the top part is my header bar, and that's my header component. Then I have a landing header component separate from the header. Really, that's a header bar at the top. And then this is the landing header. And then below this is the pain points component. Each of these are individual bits of code that are, go, are created for that specific section of a site. And each of these specific to our config file have inputs that go ahead and populate the actual content that you see here. Okay, so let's go ahead and tie it back to the config file that we went ahead and made in the last video. So within the config file, we have a bunch of different key value pairs in a JSON file that's intended to be the configuration that is then again rendering the actual site and so you'll see i've got a couple here that are just for reference and i can go ahead and flip over in a second to the actual config file that is really rendering the site but this is just a snippet from that and so you can see we've got the header where we actually have kind of the name of the site the icon that's rendering from a font or yeah a font awesome icon the title uh the button text the hero button all of that and so if we go ahead and we flip over We'll see the same stuff in here, but really if we kind of look at the actual site, which I'll go ahead and start, let me go ahead and do that right now. NPM run start. 
what we'll see is those are all directly the, the content that we see on the site. So let's go ahead and see this config file in action. Uh, so basically it's a bunch of key value pairs that go ahead and denote kind of what is the input, um, and kind of what is that key. So specifically for this, like what's the header and what's the value for the actual header. And so again, here I have header and then automation for staffing. And so if we flip over to the actual site, what we'll see here is automation for staffing is in fact the header for this site. And then if we go back, what we can see here is the money bill. The money bill is a font awesome icon that goes ahead and populates right in here. And if we go down the line within the actual presentation and within the actual config file, you'll see that all of these correlate to the actual content that you're seeing on the site that's being rendered out. And so you set the values there, and that's something that happens within N8N with the generation that we did. And then we go ahead and basically do mapping within our code in the React app to go ahead and have those rendered out where we want them to within a specific component. And so you'll see kind of the end-to-end -end workflow where it's config to component to app. And so the component or the config is here. And then if we go to any of the actual components, here's the header bar, and I'll flip through some of the components in just a second, but you'll see that I'm actually passing in a header and an icon. And you can see where the header is being passed in, where that text was, the automation for staffing. And then the icon as well, where I'm actually going and again, passing in the icon name and having that rendered out as that money bill that we see on the actual app. And then in the actual application where it comes all together, we have an app.js file that I'll go over as well that goes ahead and basically looks for the inputs for each of those sections that are being passed in for each of, sorry, each of those components. And then from there, it goes and actually renders it out. So let's go ahead and we'll pop over to the code and I'll kind of break this all down uh, with a little bit more nuance in terms of what's all happening. So if we hop over here, we've got the config file. You're probably aware of how all this works at this point. I won't spend too much time here. But what I do want to draw attention to is all of the components on the left-hand side under the SRC directory. And so basically all of these are little tiny bits of the website. So I've got a header bar, I've got a footer bar, I've got the landing header as well. That's kind of that whole section that we'll see right here. And what you'll see is all of these are just kind of little bits of code. Um, they're not super long, they're not super complex but they're all just taking an input. So it's taking in a title, a description, button text, button link, user reviews, and video URL. And then it's actually going ahead and it's rendering all of that out over here so that way you can see it. And so it's just a combination of components that I've got, went ahead and used to actually build out that single landing page. And where all of these come together is these components are great, but you need to actually go ahead and use them. And so in this app.js file, this is where you're actually kind of connecting the dots. And so I'm importing all these different components. So my header bar, my landing header, uh, industry pain points, all of these through import statements. And then my entire page, all of the content for it, or all of, I guess, the, the code content for it is all from lines 26 to line 73-ish. And I'm just passing in stuff from the config file and you can see where we're actually going ahead and getting the config file where we're pulling it all in with this config.json that we were just in. And it's just passing all those into the actual components and then again, rendering it all out. And so it makes it really, really easy to change the content of your site without having to really change the structure. Now, if you did want to go ahead and change the structure, you can absolutely do that. And that's totally fine. Um, but all that would be is basically going in and changing a component, whether that's modify, adding or removing a component, and then changing the inputs or outputs accordingly within this app.js file. Okay, so let's go ahead and get back to the presentation. So within the presentation, kind of where we're at is just kind of breaking down how this all works. Um, so basically within the React app, there's a couple things that are happening. You're essentially fetching a config. Once that config is fetched, it's being used to go ahead and populate the site. It's rendering the content, and then you have that result. Just what we went over, but kind of at a higher level. But you may be asking, okay, just because you're passing text files in or text content in from that JSON doesn't mean that my site's going to look good. Uh, and so that's where Tailwind comes into play. So similar to how React is a JavaScript library or framework, Tailwind is a utility CSS framework. And so taking a step back, CSS is cascading style sheets. And so every website has a couple different components to it. There's the HTML content, 
that is really kind of the content of the site. The CSS is kind of the stylistic stuff. So that's colors. That's a lot of times like the different margins on the page, the different sections, all of that's done with CSS. Um, and there's JavaScript that actually kind of provides the working functionality and goes and makes it do something. So with Tailwind, so basically what it is, is it allows you to apply different styles really easily to different uh, parts of your HTML within your components. And so if we look here for the header bar, I've outlined a couple different areas where I'm actually using the Tailwind CSS capabilities. And so like background gray, text white, padding, um, these are all kind of padding as well. And then I'm setting it up where I'm saying, hey, I want the text to be a 2XL. I want the font to be bold. And I want to go ahead and use, uh, I want to go ahead and align it to the left. So if we go ahead and kind of cross-reference that to the React app, we can see that. I know this doesn't look gray when it's against the blue, but it is a gray. Um, and so we go ahead and we can easily style that and make changes to our site stylistically using Tailwind. And they provide a ton of these utility classes that you can go ahead and apply to really quickly kind of change the look and feel of your site without having to write your own custom CSS classes, which if you've done before, no, isn't particularly difficult, but it is time consuming and is something that isn't particularly valuable when you can use these utility classes and go ahead and actually make this all happen in a much shorter time. So that's kind of the styling component of this, uh, along with the functionality that we went over with the React components of it all. And so what does this actually mean and kind of what is this in the broader kind of context of a tech stack? Um, so a lot of people will talk about different tech stacks and different technologies that they use to build stuff. Um, this would be an example of this where you're using React and Tailwinds to go ahead and actually build your front end application or front end functionality to allow you again to have that functionality where specifically we're pulling in config files and doing all of that. But then also it's giving us the structure, it's giving us kind of an easy way to update it and to make changes quickly. Then again, it's really straightforward with that config driven approach. Okay, so I wanna go ahead and show you quickly kind of how to actually run this application and how you can iterate in real time. So that way, if you're not crazy about the content that was that came out of N8N or you wanna make some changes to the site that you're able to easily do that on your own computer. And so this is going to imply that you already have React installed on your computer and NPM and all of that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and have a readme and make this whole thing open source. So you can go ahead and follow along if you have any questions. But basically what I'll do is I'll go ahead and quit this and restart it. It does take a second to start. So I'll go ahead and start it and then I'll navigate away. Um, there we go. And so what we have here is this is a live version of the site. And so I can go and change something in the config file and it's gonna change over here. So let me go ahead and add something that is really obvious for what I'm gonna actually change. So give me just one second. Where is my config file? There it is. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's add testing one, two, three, four, five, six. And so that's gonna be under the pain point title. And so if I go ahead and I flip back over, you see testing one, two, three, four, five, six. And so this happens real time. And so the, basically the way that a React app works is it's gonna render out real time when you're doing your development. Um, but then when you're actually satisfied with the results and how it's rendering out, then you do what's called a build. And so just as I ran NPM run start, when you're happy with the results, you run NPM run build, and that actually builds it and creates a static site. And that static site is then what allows you to go and actually stand it up on a really affordable hosting provider, such as AWS S3, Cloudflare also has an offering in this space. I believe Azure does as well and some of the other hosting providers where you're just rendering out static HTML, JavaScript, and CSS content, and you don't need to actually have a server to run it. Whereas many other kind of websites and CMS platforms like a, a WordPress require an active server and require an active program to run it. And that's what makes it a lot more expensive to go ahead and build your landing pages and run those on something like that. So flipping back, we can go ahead and again, we've got kind of the different components. We've got everything in here, as you'd expect, you run it. When you're done, you go ahead and you can run NPM run build. And I won't go ahead and actually do the deployment for this video, 
that's going to be in the next one. But just want to show you that it is really easy to go ahead and run these commands and have a full, full, full blown built version of this. So again, won't go down that rabbit hole, but go ahead and tune in for the next video for that. All right. So back to it. What the process looks like is we go ahead and what's going to come next is we're going to build the actual application. So I started the build. It takes a second. So I'll flip back and show you that the build has been completed. And really what's happening there is, again, it's compressing everything. It's optimizing for page speed. It's optimizing your images. It's optimizing all the JavaScript. It's really making it as mini mini minified and complete as possible. So that way, when you do go and launch it on a static site provider, that, again, it's it's loading quickly. It's it's lightweight. It's only including exactly what you need it to. So it's going to output the static files, and then that's going to get it to the point where it's actually, quote, unquote, deployment ready. And so what that actually means is then we can take those files and once we create an S3 bucket within AWS, we can go ahead and put those files in there. And with a couple small configuration steps, we'll have a site that's available to the entire internet. Again, for we're talking typically pennies, maybe dollars if you have a ton of traffic to it, but in most cases for less than a dollar a month. And so for my 30 plus landing pages, a dollar a month is something I can definitely stomach, especially if it's going to drive traffic to my actual site and to my actual consulting business. And so it feels like a no brainer for me and for a lot of other businesses that already have those domains, but want to put them to good use in an affordable and efficient way. All right. So let's see. Yep. My build is complete. You can see I've got a couple files. If we go into the build directory static, um, it's really pretty straightforward. So we've got a couple different files in here. There's really not much to it. Um, like I said, I'll go ahead and I'll go over that in the next video, but as a whole, really not much to it. And I do quickly want to highlight the actual GitHub repo for this. I'll share this as well, but let me go ahead and just pull that up and I will share that. And this is going to be completely open source. So that way you can go ahead and pull this down and make any modifications that you see fit for it. And so what we've got here is the landing page skeleton this name will probably change um, but again i'll link it in the in the description and this has all of the files that you would expect it to with the reference config file um, as well as the components in here so you can actually see how this all works you can reference kind of anything that doesn't make sense the config file resides within the public directory uh, basically has all the information in here that you would expect and again would have it render out okay so just to recap the benefits, um, really kind of the key drivers here was speed, scalability, consistency, maintainability, and cost, which I actually don't have on here. And all of those are achieved with this approach. It's super straightforward. Um, once you've got it set up in the first place, you can turn out whether it's 10 landing pages, 1,000 landing pages, 100,000 landing, landing pages, really pretty easy to do with this approach once you have that config file that's generated from NADN. And then you can go ahead and actually stand those up on websites that you own or domains that you own in a really quick and easy way in the next step. And so I'll go over that again, showing how you do that with S3, as well as some Cloudflare for DNS and all the good stuff that it goes into the actual deployment process. So stay tuned for the next video where we go over the deployment of how to actually stand this thing up and make it accessible to the internet. You'll probably notice some small tweaks from the landing page that I showed today, the landing page that goes live. There's still a little bit of content stuff that I need to work on and modify for my own use case, but it should be relatively similar and look familiar for that next video. So go ahead and check my channel for that, and we'll jump right into the point into the deployment for the next video. Now, last thing I want to touch on is if this is interesting to you, please like, subscribe, comment, thumbs up, whatever. It all really helps me. I'm just getting started and I plan to make a lot more content like this. And so again, if you have any feedback, comments, questions like that, don't be shy. Feel free to reach out, set time up with me. I'm really open and accessible and just want to help people learn about the power of automation and how they can use it in the context of either their own business, their own side projects, whatever it may be. So like I said, stay tuned for videos coming in the, f in the near future. Thank you so much and good luck automating.